Hey everyone, it's Scorin here with Tarkov News and Community Reflection. In this episode, I'm going to be doing the Escape from Tarkov roadmap that BSG just released a few hours ago. So in the first part of their roadmap, they're going to be doing a technical update, which fixes the visual problems with flashlights that they had with the lights on weapon. So that's the bug where if you turn on your flashlight, uh, everyone else on the map can see that your flashlight is still on, even if you turn it off. They're going to rework the sky on all locations. This way it's going to be more atmospheric. They're going to bring back some of the darker skies that they had before instead of such the brightly moonlit nights and the bright daytime sky boxes that we have. They're going to bring back some more atmospheric sky boxes for the environment. They're doing audio retweaks on interchange and lighthouse locations. So supposedly what they're doing is that they're filming sounds or recording sounds for each and every individual room and how you would hear it from other locations. So hopefully we're getting a full audio rework of interchange and one for lighthouse, which would be really nice. They're making changes in the headset system, so this could mean that Comtac 4s are no longer reigning supreme, or they still might reign supreme, but be more reached by other of the old headsets like Excels or Comtac 2s, and make a more balanced scale across the board on that. They're making changes in the AI voice line playback system, in particular their frequency, volume, and positioning. So some scavs, as I'm sure you've noticed, always voice line all the time. They basically don't stop and other scavs stay perfectly still and make no noise. And then they just shoot you the moment that you walk by. They're probably working on that to make sure that uh, it's more balanced out where scabs will make noise if they're standing still, but probably not as much while they're moving around. They fixed incorrect sound and volume of gunshots and explosions at short distances. So I've heard a lot of people complain before and I've had it happen to myself where when a nade blows up at your feet, it won't make any noise at all, but your teammates will have heard it and it kind of leaves you confused as to how you died. And they're also going to fix the incorrect movement of bots in the prone position. As I'm sure you've all seen before, rogues, when they're prone, or even some scavs, can spin 180 or keep doing 360s while they're prone, uh, basically unimpeded by momentum. And I'm sure they want that to stop because I imagine having the bots spin the way they do is very game-breaking in the sense that it pulls you out of the experience when you see them just spinning in circles like that. The next thing that they're going to do is they're going to transition to Unity 2000 or 2021. With the transition to Unity 2021, it will allow the introduction of new technologies aimed at optimizing and updating graphics, including support for the HDR, reducing memory consumption by optimizing the memory usage of locations and items. So if you've heard me complain about it before, I always say that the items were poorly optimized on this game. The way that they fixed reserve by making it, making it load faster was simply to reduce the amount of items on it. So old reserve and old interchange, they had longer load times because they had more items on them. So when they pulled all of the items off the map and reduced the amount of loot, it made them run smoother and it fixed the FPS issues. So really what they have is an indexing issue and they need to optimize all of their items. Even if it has its own ID, they could still be, I don't know, copying and pasting it somehow or using it from a, a base model instead of having everything being its own unique item. At any rate, they do need to optimize their items because it does take a long time to load everything into a map. After that, they're going into the 13.1 technical update. And this is where they're, once they transition to Unity, they can use the new Unity tools to perform this technical update where they want to increase the number of players and bots in a raid up to 60. So we'll probably see 20 players, 25 players, and uh, 40 to 35 bots. They're going to improve the hit registration. And they're so effectively what this means is that when your bullets actually connect to a certain part of the skeleton, that's the part that's going to take damage. I'm sure you guys have seen times where you think you're shooting legs and it turns out to be all stomach protected by an armor that's nowhere near where you're actually shooting on them. So that's what they're going to be working on, as well as the increase in accuracy and position of players and servers on the client. So it's going to try to match you with people who are closer in general. That way that you get lower ping matches and lower amounts of desync. Effectively, if you're playing with people who are closer by, you're going to be affected by ping less. So they want to place you with more regionalized players so that you get impacted by desync less. And then on top of that, they're going to be making noticeable increases in FPS in the online raids and reducing the chance of encountering desync with the servers. So as I was saying, 
by increasing that accuracy of position matching. They're, that's how, one of the ways that they're going to try to reduce desync. They're also going to reduce the chance of encountering desync on the server just itself by probably improving their servers or just optimizing all of their stuff in Unity. They're also going to work on network traffic optimization. So that's like peer to peer connection. They're going to work on that so that it takes up less RAM or memory and functions quicker. And they're going to do new culling systems on old locations. So if you've ever played like the zombie game, World uh, War Z, or some of the newer games perform, use this technology, it's called a culling technology. Effectively, what it does is as one object passes in front of another, it stops rendering the object that's out of your line of sight, and it'll only render the parts of it that it needs to. And with rapid rendering and unloading assets like that and reloading them as they become visible to you, a game can take a lot less of the memory. Instead of needing everything within a certain distance loaded, it's just everything in your line of sight that's loaded. And they're also going to optimize RAM consumption, including the elimination of possible memory leaks, which I know they have, because as you all know, we all have to restart Tarkov every five to 10 raids at least. And they're going to optimize the rendering system for semi-transparent materials. So presumably that means that they're going to make all of the leaves on all of the trees and all of the bushes take less RAM. The last part of their roadmap is the 14.0.0 content update. This should hopefully come with wipe. So it will include the Streets of Tarkov expansion. I don't know if it's going to be the full expansion or just another quarter of it, because what we have now is only one quarter of the full Streets of Tarkov. We're going to get the BTR on the Streets of Tarkov. I believe that's the vehicle and that includes the boss for the vehicle itself. We're going to get vaulting, which is a skill which allows you to jump over small objects at the cost of stamina. They're going to be putting in armor plates for body armor and reworking the hitboxes. Presumably, this means that your stomach hitbox won't drop down to your knees anymore. Besides weapon presets, they'll have kit presets. That way, if you want to have a specific gun, a certain helmet, certain balaclava on, they'll just have a preset kit for you to be able to slap those together, which will be really nice. They're going to be adding weapon animations when interacting with cover. So your gun is going to be able to rest on top of objects while firing at them. And it's going to look like part of the terrain and going to interact with the world a little more. You're going to be able to do left shoulder shooting. So instead of only relying on the right peak, you're going to be able to swap the gun around and you're going to be able to left shoulder peak, which will be really cool. That will make combat a lot more dynamic instead of always hunting for a right peak. We're getting another hideout expansion again, so maybe another wall is coming down. They're going to randomize loot containers. Maybe they're just going to scramble up loot in all of the different containers. Who knows what that really means in the end, because Nikita generally changes the way the loot works almost every wipe without fail. So that's just going to be a surprise when it happens. They're going to rework the recoil mechanics of all weapons. Hopefully, as people have asked, this means that recoil will actually get worse as you hold a weapon down and not get better, which will encourage the burst fire and be more of a tactical style combat that Nikita has been pushing this game towards. It's why they added in the momentum changes. It's why they keep reducing the amount of strength that you have by default and increasing the weight of all of the items to constantly try to slow players down when they get too heavy and then make them use injectors that are costly to make up for the strength difference or actually make your characters level before you can take in such a fully kitted kit. As far as I've seen in terms of balance changing, BSG is really trying to lean towards when you start out, you're really gonna be using scab gear. By the time you get to level two vendors, you're gonna be using SMGs. Uh, by the time you get to your level three or four vendors, you're going to be switching into the more M4s or the 556 or 545 style types. And then finally, once you've unlocked all the vendors, that's when you can move into the larger ammos like the 762 by 39 and those variants of weapons. It seems like they're trying to make a spread of when you have access to weapons and their ammos. So back to the changes that they're going to be making here. After the recoil changes, they're going to be working on the quick pistol transition. So when you run out of ammo that you can quick swap to pistols. Apparently they're adding in suppressor durability, sound variations, and subsonic ammunition. So instead of people always tearing off your suppressor all the time, people may actually take a look at the durability before stealing your suppressor. And perhaps the suppressor durability will affect how much burn is added onto your 
weapon durability burn. So for example, if your suppressor is really damaged, it may cause more damage to your weapon using an old suppressor than a new suppressor. They're going to have an ammunition loading interface. Hopefully this means that we might get some rapid reloading tools as well. It'd be nice to see some rapid reloaders, which they have in real life. Sight brightness adjustments. So perhaps this means they're going to be working on the game in the way that people won't be able to use their NVIDIA control panel to see at night, and you'll be required to use NVGs. A user interface rework. That'll be nice. The user interface doesn't exactly look the best. The quest rebalancing, that's always been needed. They've always been working on that every wipe. Look forward to hopefully seeing Shoreline being a little less boring or seeing some other maps being a little more interactive. Rebalance of leveling skills and mastering. So hopefully this means some of the mastery skills aren't absolutely ridiculous because basically if you get a skill to 51, it lets you ignore something in the game. Like the moment you get to 51 metabolism, you basically don't have to worry about food and water anymore. And a lot of the other ones work the same way. They're adding in bipods and stabilizing firearms with cover. So as I said, with the firearms interacting with cover, you're going to be able to rest them on things to stabilize them, which is going to be a really neat concept. And hopefully they're adding bipods for snipers because it would be really cool to get a bipod for snipers so you can aim the gun around a little more and like do slight angling with it, even if it looks weird on the scope while you have the gun on the ground. And they're adding choosing which body part to heal via hotkey. So that will be really nice. I'm going to use my numpad. So like eight for head, five for torso, four for right arm, six for left arm, and kind of go from there with uh, which to heal and use a numpad to auto heal with a Salewa. That'll be really nice. A helmet flashlight. They already have one, but maybe they're going to make it so you can toggle them on and off because right now there is a flashlight that does go on the helmet. But like I said, you have to turn it on in your inventory. Or you have to put it on a gun, turn it on, take it off the gun, and then strap it back onto your helmet. And you have to do the reverse if you want to turn it off. So once it's on, it's on. Once it's off, it's off type of deal. It's, it's not really good to use in raids currently. Meds and food consumption upon double click. Well, that's nice. And then they're going to be adding more guns. The AK-12, PKM, the RPD, the ASVT-40, uh, the 9A91, the UBGL for SCAR, and others. I'm assuming that means there's also going to be other weapons added and just other changes that they're not listing here in their primary roadmap. So that looks to be everything for that's on the roadmap that they posted to Twitter. I look forward to these changes. I know that this first technical update is coming in May. Hopefully we'll get the content update by June or at the latest late July, because I'm assuming that if each one of these points takes about a month to cover, that like this is going to be a month for the first technical update to get to like, it, let's just say it's late May. The Unity transition will just be something that they'll do in the middle of the night. It'll probably take them four to six hours and they'll pull it off on like a Tuesday night or something so that everybody's there on Wednesday morning for all of the inevitable fires that'll happen. The next technical update will be leading us into the content update. So no idea on the time frame there. It'll probably take all of June to get this technical update smoothed out at least, and maybe even longer than that. That's why I'm assuming with delays, we'll probably see the wipe late July. Okay, well, that's all the news for today. Scoring Claw, over and out.